Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. I um, want to welcome you again to our um, Bible series here. And uh, today we're, we're still in the, um, the Old Testament prophets, the minor prophets, and we're going to be looking at Zephaniah. So please open your Bibles, turn to Zephaniah. I'll spell it because it's like uh, sometimes not so easy to find. Z E P H A N I A H. So Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. So Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And here we read. Gather together, yes, gather together, you shameless nation. Gather before judgment begins, before your time to repent is blown away like chaff. Act now, before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord, of the Lord's anger begins. Seek the Lord, all who are humble, and follow his commands. Seek to do what is right and to live humbly. Perhaps, even yet, the Lord will protect you, protect you from his anger on that day of destruction. God bless the reading of his word. Repent now. Repent now. So the background here is the uh, uh, passage is from the prophet uh, Zephaniah. He's a prophet from Jerusalem, and he's calling Judah to repent. So um, the book is very detailed. When you look at it and look at others, it has a very detailed structure. Um, so it's a little bit different than the other um, prophetic books, but um, that's okay, right? That's just the way it is. Um, uh, Zephaniah prophesied around about 640 to 609 BC as Josiah is king in Judah. So um, God is speaking through his prophet here and the prophet's message is about the coming catastrophic judgment against Judah um, which you can read about in chapter 1 uh, that precedes this verse. So I encourage you read the entire book of Zephania and uh, look at chapter 1 um, where God um, the message is like oh um, God's judgment is coming and uh, repent right repent so that sets up our passage we're looking at today so um, however as we see there's also promise of ref restoration for the faithful remnant a remnant Right, a group of people, people, God-fearing people, people whose hearts are bent uh, towards God, towards the Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. And so um, we want to hold fast to that promise, right? So our topic is um, the call to repent, to repent now or face God's judgment um, when... Um, when believer and unbeliever will be separated. So verses, verse 1, when it says gather together, that means to assemble, to hear God's call to repent. So that's an act of God's divine grace. And in verse 2, we see the time to repent is now. Time is fleeting. There may be no other opportunity to repent later. Yeah. So that's an important thing. Sometimes there's people whom, some people may say, oh, well, you know, I'll deal with God and whatever, uh, whenever, or, or later, or when I'm older, or whatever. But you wonder, we, God only knows how many people may have said that and um, did not turn to Jesus. And, well, God only knows what, what happened, if they repented or not. But they may have ended, if they didn't, in uh, eternal hellfire in hell, right? Separated from God. So um, uh, Luke uh, writes in the book of Acts, um, Luke wrote both the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, um, in encouraging us here to understand this truth, to repent now. In Acts 17, verses 30 to 31, 
Acts chapter 17, 30 to 31. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he commands everyone, everywhere, to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. God bless the reading of his word. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, right? <coughs> Luke is referring to here. So back to our passage in verse 3. Um, this refers to wholehearted, surrendered faith and trust in God. And perhaps, the word perhaps here refers uh, to, uh, to the ungodly, uh, those who still have not yet um, turned to God. So we may ask, or someone may ask, what is repentance? So this is a big one, and it's a good question. It's something we want to um, take to heart. And the Bible tells us uh, over and over and over again uh, what repentance is and um, uh, why it is important. So um, this is a big one, all right? So just, just think about it and take it to heart too. Uh, repentance is basically agreeing with God uh, that we are broken sinners. In other words, we're born uh, sinful. There's nothing good in us that can be redeemed. And uh, we are unable to save ourselves by our own merit or deeds um, apart from God. All right? I repeat that. Um, uh, even though somebody else may teach something different, the truth is the Bible tells us we, in our own strength, are unable to save ourselves by our own merits or deeds apart from God. And, this is also a big one, we are um, to uh, call to turn away from sin and evil. Um, however, we can't do that in our own strength. We can only do that with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, nobody can. You can't, I can't, nobody can. Uh, that's why um, Jesus Christ helps us with this. So um, there's another um, encouragement and admonishment the Apostle Paul helps us with in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Again, there's this distinction between those who turn to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, and those who won't. So Paul writes, For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There is no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. God bless the reading of his word. So we want to ask the Lord Jesus to help us with this, because he's the only one. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He initiates our faith, and he completes it too. Um, not, not in this lifetime, but as we turn to him and um, when, we, when we are with him uh, in heaven, um, then that will be completed. So, so what do we make of all of this? What are, what are you to do? What are, what are we all called to do? Repent now. Repent now. Why? Because without repentance, um, we remain helpless in this. Right? The, we're born, uh, born sinners in our, own, in our own fallen sin state. Without repentance, we remain helpless in that fallen sin state. Um, without repentance, without Christ. So 1 John 3, 6 tells us, Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. God bless the reading of his word. So as we let Jesus Christ live in and through our hearts, um, we, um, we still have that sinful inclination. And even though it says here, will not sin, uh, the meaning is that um, even though we do sin, we know exactly that we turn right back to Jesus and ask him to help us uh, to, to, to let him, you know, to Jesus uh, live his um, life in and through us. So uh, what happens is our disposition of heart is towards Jesus and we turn away from sin and evil. 
but then when there, there may be somebody or somebody you know or who just you know keeps on sinning or whoever they may be uh, who may not understand um, who they don't know uh, Jesus or understand who Jesus is and so um, you will we will see people um, by their works right Jesus also tells us um, um, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit so God bless you in word so we see from that that um, that's one way we can we can uh, determine uh, people who are um, whose hearts are bent towards uh, Jesus and those who are not it's not easy and it takes time but uh, with God's help and staying in the Bible um, <clears throat> as I always say um, right, uh, the best Bible uh, is an open Bible the best Bible always is an open Bible so stay in God's Word every day and uh, in, in, in prayer and in word as much as you can and build your day around God's Word and uh, let the Holy Spirit speak into your heart and help you. You will learn more and more how God operates. The Bible is God's heart and mind expressed in His Word. And the Bible is true from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. So we have God's Word, and Jesus is the Word Himself. Um, so this is a big one here. Um, without repentance, so if people are unrepentant, right? There's only eternal judgment left. And Luke 13, verse 3. In Luke 13, verse 3, we read, Not at all, and you will perish too, unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. So, repenting and turning to Jesus, um, that leads to eternal life, what we call heaven, right? The Bible tells us, um, a bit, a bit about heaven, but actually uh, more about hell, right? And Jesus tells us more about, uh, you know, um, eternal separation and, the, and what happens as a consequence um, as turning away from him. There's John chapter 3, 16 to 21. That's the st one of the sternest and firmest warnings um, to be aware of that. Um, so... Uh, Jesus does not want want to be eternally separated with us, but unfortunately there will be people who won't, will not embrace uh, God for whatever reason. Uh, God only knows, right? So today, now, here, now, we can already embrace and grow in our personal relationship with Christ. So basically humility is um, where it all starts and begins thinking about um, our, our theme, Repent Now, as we were just renewing Stephania. So the time to repent is is now. So to go about it is humility. That's to be humble. That's where it all starts. And Jesus reminds us here in Luke 18, verse 14, um, he talks about a, a person who is uh, self-righteous, legalistic, and someone who is indeed truly repentant, I encourage you. Um, it's the um, the Pharisee and the publican, also known as the Pharisee and the tax collector. Read this yourself. Very encouraging um, what humility and repentance means. So Luke 18, verse 14, Jesus tells us, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. God bless you in your last word. So that's our promise. Um, Jesus calls us here to, uh, to humility, to repent now. Um, that's the most important thing. And to turn to Jesus while there's still time. May God bless you and keep you.